Panasonic announced their first ever camera with phase detection autofocus back in January. For the longest time, Panasonic has, in my opinion, mostly only been held back by a poor autofocus system. But today, I'm excited to share a little bit more about how Panasonic has completely flipped this on its head, but also about what's missing in this camera. The Panasonic S5 II has a 24 megapixel sensor, dual native ISO, up to 6.5 stops of image stabilization, and of course, their new phase detect autofocus. This camera has become a beast in many different ways, and it outperforms other at its unbelievable price tag of only 2,000 US dollars. So let's get started with a few things that I like about it. Firstly, this camera's low light control is off the charts. When exposing properly, I'm not exaggerating that I found myself shooting at 25,600 ISO in scenarios and being okay with the results. Yes, 25,600. Here are some examples of images in which you can see how it performs. What I like even more about the noise in the Panasonic S5 II is that even when it is present, it's consistent. This allows for programs like Topaz Photo AI to clean them up without a trace of noise that was previously present, even when shooting at these crazy high numbers. As mentioned before, it contains a dual native ISO. So its first ISO begins at 640 and its second kicks in at 4000. What's great about this is that with this camera, I don't even blink about kicking my ISO value up to 6400 and I'll do it in any scenario as the image quality is practically just as good as those lower numbers. Once moving up to 12,800 and above, I do start to become a little bit more intentional about my reasoning, but like you saw before, I'm not scared to do it. I'm also very impressed by the image stabilization on this camera. This is some of the best image stabilization I've used just coming out of a body alone. And without dual IS, at wider focal lengths, it's almost as if it's locked off on a tripod. But at tighter telephoto lengths, of course, you'll start to notice a little bit more repercussions. The build of the S5 II is pretty standard for Panasonic. I've always thought that Panasonic, Canon, and even Nikon most of the time have really nice ergonomics, and this camera definitely does not disappoint in that way. Viewfinder and LCD screens are both great, but not the best out there, but plenty enough for the price tag of $2,000. The joystick is also improved from their past models, in my opinion, and their button placements are always spot on. The one thing that I wish that they would have chosen to include is a newer tilt kind of flip hybrid screen that we're seeing on a lot of newer camera bodies, but they only chose to include a flip screen on this camera. So when it comes to image quality, the 24 megapixels is unfortunate. I might be spoiled now just after using mostly 50 megapixel sensors for the past two or three years, but I did find myself wishing that I had a little bit more resolution in my shots. 24 megapixels is still fantastic if you choose not to crop, but I found that if I started cropping too much, I would notice a difference from my Panasonic S1R body of 48 megapixels. Of course, this is under the disclaimer that admittedly, I am a huge pixel peeper and always viewing my images on a 27 inch 4K screen just to make sure I like my results. So in many situations and for many people, 24 megapixels might not be stopping you. Speaking of resolution, the biggest annoyance to me about this camera is that just like the previous S5 before it, when you shoot in 4K 60P, it throws the camera into an APS-C crop. This is a double-edged sword. In a way, it's actually not that bad for wildlife videography because often you find yourself wanting more focal reach to punch in closer to the subject and capture more detail. But the annoying part is that it forces me to constantly have to recompose out in the field as I switch from photo to video mode, and that definitely is not ideal. In regards to video quality, I'm happy to report that the S5 II has a beautiful 4K 60 10-bit 422 built into the camera and an unlimited recording limit. So that's a huge plus for me as the footage looks beautiful and fantastic. The dynamic range is quite great on the S5 II as well and runs up to 14 stops of dynamic range, which allows for tons of recovery in post-production. Last thing to mention before we hop into talking about the autofocus that I know y'all are waiting for. The burst modes on this camera are pretty normal. Not flagship status by any means, but good enough for most. Mechanically, it can shoot up to nine frames per second, and electronically, it can shoot up to 30 frames per second. Although, I didn't really like the rolling shutter involved in the electronic. Personally, I don't often find myself wanting to shoot more than 10 frames per second mechanically due to the larger intake of photos that I have to cull through later, but there are always those occasional situations in which having a crazy burst mode like the Sony A1 is helpful. The buffer on the S5 II is great and very well outfitted for the camera, as there were a few times when I was out shooting that I tested out holding down the burst mode at 9 frames per second for 5 seconds, and the camera didn't even stutter. 
Now for the hot topic of the day, autofocus. This camera includes the typical AF focus modes like tracking, zone, pinpoint, etc., as well as it contains animal subject detect focus mode. While this camera doesn't list it as being an option in the menus, surprisingly, it does actually attempt to focus onto the eye of the animal specifically, as discovered through Richard Wong's review here on YouTube. Shout out to him for discovering that. Now, this begs the question, is it any good though? Let's start with imaging. When it comes to the photography aspect, if you come from past experience as a Panasonic wildlife photographer specifically, this camera body is absolutely revolutionary. I'd argue that I was able to tack three to four times the amount of subjects that I was able to with their old DFD focusing system. And it was an absolute joy to watch this camera find subjects and actually lock on. Another thing to note is that in specifically high contrasted or dark scenarios, this phase detect system runs circles around the old DFD system. On a side note, it's also worth mentioning that all of the telephoto testing was also shot on this non-native Sigma 150 to 600 millimeter sport lens. Now, on other reviews around YouTube, you might have heard from many that the S5 II has either the very best new autofocus system of any camera, or the S5 II is second only to Sony's autofocus. So for me, in regards to wildlife photography specifically, I can say that this camera is ever so slightly worse than the Sony A1 in my experience, and most likely other newer Sony bodies. While with the Sony A1, I was able to tack about 70% of my shots in subject detect modes, on the S5 II, I've been able to tack about 60% of my shots in subject detect. However, at the same time, when I missed focus with the S5 II, it felt much easier to correct my focus than on the Sony A1. But this could likely be due to how much more time I've spent becoming aware of Panasonic's functionality and how it works. In my mind, this doesn't render autofocus completely reliable, just as it didn't for me with the Sony A1, but it makes it to where I feel like I can use it in more predictable scenarios, or in scenarios where I can quickly correct with manual focus. So far, I've been able to take out the S5 II on five separate excursions in a variety of lighting scenarios to test out this autofocus. When it comes to wildlife videography, however, I'd argue that the S5 II is actually probably the best autofocus I've ever used. It is incredible, and for some reason, it feels like it just does a slightly better job of finding the subject, but more so, it does a better job of sticking to the subject while recording, as opposed to any other camera body I've ever used. Once focus is locked, I didn't feel afraid to move the subject around the frame, and even at times where I lost the subject for a moment and brought the camera back into position, in AFS, the camera was smart enough not to try to refocus during those brief moments where it lost the subject. This is something that I can appreciate about Panasonic being such a video-centric brand for so long, is that they seem to do a better job of incorporating how a typical videographer might like to work with a camera. Without diving too deep into it, even when autofocus was struggling in video, the S5 II incorporates the smoothest manual focus assist I've ever seen in a camera. Let's say that you lose track of a subject or wanting to rack focus onto a different subject. By simply turning the manual focus ring, you'll initiate the camera going into manual focus mode temporarily. Once you've found your subject, you can hold down the back button focus to keep your MF engaged, or you can let go of the back button focus and stop turning the lens to let the autofocus re-engage. This seamless mashup of autofocus and manual focus to correct it when things aren't working, along with the button placements being so ideal, made me more comfortable than ever to adjust on the fly. And in wildlife filmmaking, that's really important. My argument against autofocus during video in wildlife photography is that so many times I've missed key moments due to the autofocus bouncing all around and the MF assist modes either not being present or being very poorly implemented and the buttons in rough positions. This S5 II finally fixes problems that I've always had and for the first time now, I feel comfortable shooting in autofocus when creating wildlife films since I can so easily correct it and override it with manual focus. Finally, let's compare the S5 II to the competition. First of all, let's name another full frame camera that offers dual native ISO with outstanding low light noise control, 6.5 stops of image stabilization, 4K60 10-bit 422, and an autofocus system as advanced as this, all under the $2,000 price tag. I'll wait. This is what blows my mind about the S5 II and why I'd argue that if you're on a budget, this may very well be the best camera purchase available currently for wildlife photography. Seriously, if you're wanting to get into full frame lineup with a budget under flagship prices, 
or if you're looking to upgrade an older camera due to either poor noise control, a need for more advanced video features, or a better autofocus, I'd highly recommend this camera. Even if you aren't on a budget, this camera may very well still be the best choice for you. But in order to evaluate that, let's talk about two ways that it falls short from a few other flagships. Firstly, if you want that beautiful 4K 120p that the Sony A1 or the Nikon Z9 offers, then you'll be needing to spend the extra money. The 4K 60 APS-C crop is also annoying as previously mentioned, but considering the fact that this camera is only $2,000 and still contains 10-bit 422, I'll give it a pass. Overall, if you really want significantly improved video quality, you'll need to find yourself spending at least two and a half times the price of this single camera to get the Z9, or over three times the price of this camera to get the Sony A1, or R5, R3 included in that bracket as well. The way that I see it, it's amazing that they could pack this amount of quality into a camera at this price. Secondly, for some, the 24 megapixel sensor will be a deterrent from purchasing this camera for some of you. Ultimately, if you're a wildlife photographer who doesn't shoot video, I'd say this or the fact that you've already invested so heavily into a different brand are about the only two things that would keep you from an upgrade here. Many wildlife photographers will still vouch for shooting at 24 megapixels, and the upside to this lower resolution sensor is the best noise control that I have ever seen. But overall, it's understandable if people want a higher megapixel count, myself included. In my opinion, to write off of Gerald Undone's statement that he made when this camera first released, this is absolutely the best bang for buck camera available on the market and made within the past five years. Now, in wildlife photography specifically, this is surprising, but it's no exception to that. Panasonic kept the amazing features that they are constantly upgrading with each camera body, and they finally made a significant fix to their biggest nemesis that was holding so many people back from purchasing them, autofocus. All while lowering the price of this camera from the previous S5 model and making this camera body more affordable than virtually any other full frame mirrorless out there currently. Who is this upgrade for? Well, it's not for the people that are already invested into flagship cameras and owners of Sony, Nikon, or Canon flagships, but in my opinion, if you're a full frame Panasonic user, this is a no brainer upgrade for you, unless you're keen on wanting to keep the 48 megapixel sensor and manual focusing with the S1R, like me. <laughs> if you're looking for an upgrade to a full frame system and are needing to buy a whole new set of lenses anyways, this is also a no brainer update for you, and I'd recommend this Panasonic S5 II above any other full frame mirrorless camera currently available under $4,000. If this review helped, I'd be honored if you subscribe to the channel below. And if you want to see my real life use scenario out in the wild with the Panasonic S5 II, check out this video here in the end screen.